If you want a challenge, try to come up with the six Torah portions that are named after individual people. Eventually, you will get to this week's Parsha of Balak, which is strange because he is a foreign king who sends his prophet Bilam to curse the Israelites. As you know, he winds up blessing them instead. But why is there a Torah portion named after the king who sent him? There are many answers offered. One that I like is that Bilam is a vehicle for learning a lesson about the power and possibility of transformation. At the beginning of the story, it seems clear that for a price, he will carry out the mission for which he was hired. Yet try as he might to do his patron's bidding, he cannot. He cannot utter curses because say what you want to about him. He is only capable of recognizing the truth and following what God causes him to see, which is the inherent good in this fledgling nation to whose journey God is paying close attention. It may be a story of our God is better and more powerful than your God, of biblical affirmation of the eventual place of Israel on the stage of nations, with all the attention a tiny country gets in world capitals, it is hard to say that this potential has not been achieved. And a Torah portion named after a foreign king reminds us that we live in an interconnected world. Unlike Balak, we anticipate that our interactions with those similar to us and with those who may appear at first to be quite different from us, can both be a great source of blessing. By the way, the other Torah portions are Noach, Chaye Sarah, Yitro, Korach, and Pinchas. Shabbat Shalom.